Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the all-new 15-inch MacBook Air. The 2023 MacBook Air we've been waiting for for a very long time. So I thought we'd unbox it, we'll take a look at it, set it up, and see what it's all about. Now this comes in at $1,299 and goes up to $2,499. This is actually the midnight color, but it's available in starlight, space gray, and silver. You only have one CPU option, an M2 with an 8-core CPU and 10-core GPU, but you do have some options for RAM. If we flip this over, you can see here, if we zoom in just a little bit, you can see it says MacBook Air 15 inch, and this actually has 24 gigs of RAM and two terabytes of storage. So it's fully loaded. You can also pick from a 35 watt charger or 70 watt charger as well. Let's go ahead and unbox it and open it up. So we'll take these pull tabs and pull these, no more plastic wrap around it. We'll take the other one off as well. And let's flip it over and see what we've got inside. So let's go ahead and take the top of the box off here. There we go. We'll set that aside. And we have the MacBook itself. So it's pretty big, and I'll compare it to the 13 inch as well. We'll set that aside just for a moment, and let's see what we've got in the box. So we've got a cable here, and it's a color matched USB-C to MagSafe cable. So it's in midnight, which is always really nice, although the end of this is white. And let's put this back here, and let's see what we've got as far as paperwork. So here's the paperwork that comes with it. Let's see what we've got in here. I think that's everything. So it says MacBook Air. It's a quick start guide that we've got. We've got MacBook Air, and it looks like we've got some color matched stickers. So we've got some midnight color stickers that come with it, which is always nice. Now, aside from that, I opted for the larger charger since I want it to be able to charge faster, and this should be the 70 watt charger. So let's open it up here and see what we've got. And you can see here as we spin this around, there we go. It says 70 watt USB charger or USB-C charger with USB-C in the back. Of course, you can change the end if you're traveling or something else. So let me place this back in the package and we'll take a closer look at the MacBook itself. So let's grab this, take the box. We'll move that out of the way. There we go. Slide that over here and let's take a look at the MacBook itself. So here's the MacBook and you can see, let's go ahead and unwrap it like this. There we go. We should be able to just slide this out pretty easily. And this is a pretty good size. Now, it has some adhesive here or something that's left over, but Midnight looks great, but it is a fingerprint magnet. Let's spin it over and you can see it's already got some marks from that. Now this is 3.3 pounds or 1.51 kilograms. It's not too much heavier than the 13 inch. Let's compare it in size and then we'll talk about the display and more. So here is my 13 inch MacBook Air. So to put this side by side, you can see the difference here, overall thickness, it's very similar, but a little bit different as far as thickness goes. And just in general, it's a really nice size. If you like a larger laptop, it's smaller than 16 inches, but bigger than 14 or 13 inches. So it's really great as far as the size. And as far as the weight, it doesn't feel too much different, really. It is a little heavier, but doesn't really feel much different. Now let's spin this around. We'll go ahead and open it up here. It boots up the second you open it up. Let me zoom out just a little bit. So you can see it's starting up. And as you can see, it's a 15.3 inch liquid retina display, 2,880 by 1,864 pixels. It goes up to 500 nits of brightness, has wide color P3 and true tone. Now, one thing that sets this apart from the 13 inch is that the speaker design is a little different. So we have no speaker grills on the side of the keyboard, which is a little bit odd, but we do have a new six speaker sound system with force canceling woofers. It supports spatial audio and it also has a three mic array as well. So that's something that's a little bit different. Now this does feel like it might flex a little bit as the frame is made of aluminum and it feels like it's flexing. 
Let's go around the outside. So we'll close this, we'll set it up in a moment. And as we go around the outside, we have our MagSafe connector. We've got two Thunderbolt ports. Now these are Thunderbolt 3 or USB 4 ports. It supports one 6K display at 60 Hertz. On this side, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that's on the right side. And then on the front, we just have a cutout to open it up a little bit and nothing really around the outside. We just have the four feet on the bottom with some screws in each corner and nothing more. So let's go ahead and get this set up. Now internally, we do have a little bit bigger battery, but no different battery life as far as this goes. A 66.5 watt hour battery. Apple says it's good for 18 hours of Apple TV movie playback and 15 hours of Safari. The same exact battery life as the 13 inch. It also has Wi-Fi 6, not 6E, and Bluetooth 5.3. We also have a 1080p FaceTime camera. So we'll go through and get this set up. I'll select the United States. You can use accessibility if you'd like. We'll go ahead and hit not now. Then we'll set up our Wi-Fi. Then it's actually saying a software update is available for this Mac. This Mac will be updated to Mac OS 13.4. Let's update later so we can check out what version it's actually installed with. Now it wants us to go through data and privacy. We'll click continue. Then we can actually migrate from another Mac or from a Windows PC. I'll just say not now. And now we put in our Apple ID. So I'll set this up later so we can get to the main menu quickly. So we'll skip it. And then we have to agree to the terms and conditions. So we'll hit agree. We'll hit agree again. And then we can put in the computer name. I put in MacBook Air 15, put in my password. We'll click continue here and it will create the account. I'll set it up later with my own Apple ID and more but just to get to the main screen, I thought we'd do it this way. Now it's asking if I wanna use location services, I can enable those and click continue. And then if I wanna share analytics with Apple, I can do that, otherwise just click continue. It's asking if I wanna set up screen time, I'll set that up later. And then we can enable Siri or not, we'll hit continue, choose the voice we want. Hi, I'm Siri, choose the voice you'd like me to use. And then we'll click continue. And it can set up Siri with the word hey in front of it. I'll stop that for now. We can share audio recordings. I'll skip that. And we'll click continue. And now we set up Touch ID. So we'll go ahead and do that. We just place our finger here. It will set up Touch ID pretty quickly here. There we go. Then we'll use the sides. We'll get that done pretty quickly. There we go. Hit continue. Then we can choose our look, light mode, dark mode, or auto. I tend to use auto, so we'll do that. We'll click continue, and now we're at the desktop. Now at the desktop, if we go to the Apple in the upper left, we'll go to about this Mac. And as you can see, it actually says Mac OS Ventura 13.4, but it has a build number of 22F2063. I would imagine we need to update to a new build. So there may be a new build ready for this. If we go to our settings, let's take a look at the new wallpapers that come included with it. So we'll go to wallpaper. And it looks like we have the new wallpaper here. So we have this nice new blue wallpaper. We have this radial green as they call it. So we had radial blue, radial green, radial purple, and radial yellow. Of course, once Mac OS Sonoma comes out, you'll have those kind of like radial blue. So we'll use that and let's exit. And so now this is a MacBook Air without a fan, and it has a very similar keyboard that we're used to. Let's go ahead and see if we can go in and maybe record something with FaceTime or QuickTime and see what the camera looks like. The camera and mics should be pretty good, so let's go ahead and try that out. So we'll go into QuickTime, we'll go to File, we'll go to New Movie Recording. Wait for it to load here. Let's go down and make sure we're on maximum quality. You can see that here. We've got MacBook Air microphone and we're ready to go. Let's see what this looks like. This is the camera, the HD camera from the MacBook Air and this gives you an idea of its overall quality and the audio that's coming from the three mic array. So let me know what you think sounds better, the MacBook Air or maybe this professional mic. Maybe you prefer the MacBook Air. It certainly works well enough for a lot of different situations. But let me know which one you like best in the comments below. So let's go ahead and stop this. There we go, we've stopped it. We'll just minimize it for now, I'll save it later. And let's just see what the speed of the drive is like. We'll run a Geekbench score and let me type on it just a moment as well. 
Now I've installed the update to the latest version of Mac OS Ventura. It's on 13.4 with the latest build. It's asking me to use iCloud and I've installed Disk Speed Test from Blackmagic Design and also Geekbench. So let's go into Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. We'll load it for the first time and let's see what we get. So we'll hit start and the write speed is 3,154.4 megabytes per second. Read speed is 2,943.9 megabytes per second. So they're going a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower, but in general, they're 3,000 write speed, a little over that, and about almost 3,000 read speed. Quite fast overall. Now let's go ahead and run Geekbench 6. We'll go into our downloads here where I downloaded it. We'll open it up. We've got Geekbench open and you can see it says macOS 13.4 in the new build of 22F2073. And we have 24 gigs of RAM with the Apple M2. Let's go ahead and run a CPU benchmark and let's see what we get. As you can see, the benchmark's completed and our single core score is 2,617 and multi-core is 9,913. While it's not as fast as some others, that's still quite good. And one thing I thought we'd check quickly since it just finished benchmarks is to see what the overall thermals are like, since this is when it gets the hottest. So if we bring in our thermal camera here, we can see that we're at about 85 degrees Fahrenheit in the hottest area. It's actually not bad at all. So it's not really warm to the touch. It's not very hot. And if we close this and take a look at the backside here, it's completely room temperature. It's amazing how well it stays cool and it's really not a concern at all. So if you wanna edit 4K video or do something more intensive, it may get a little bit warmer, but in general, it's staying nice and cool right after even running benchmarks. During the benchmarks, I had the same result, 85 degrees Fahrenheit. With a MacBook Air, you may not be using it for heavy duty tasks all the time, such as editing video, maybe using tons of different things in Lightroom or Photoshop or Pixelmator Pro, but it should be able to handle those without an issue. Of course, if you're writing a paper with it, that's where the keyboard comes in, where we wanna see what it's actually like. And this is a very similar keyboard to what we've had in previous MacBooks of the same sort of generation. So if we press on it, there's very minimal flex. There is a little bit, but it is an aluminum frame, so it's pretty good that way. And of course, the keyboard throw is the same as the Air that we have before with the 13 inch, so pretty good there. Good feedback, maybe not as much as we have with the Pro models this year, but this is pretty good in general. I don't think it will be a problem for anyone. If we go into notes, within notes, I thought we'd take a listen to what this sounds like. Let me move my microphone so you can hear it. That's what the keyboard sounds like. And also I thought you'd wanna take a listen to the new speakers since we have a little bit different arrangement this time around. So let's open some royalty free music and see what it sounds like. The speakers sound pretty good, but they're not as good as the MacBook Pro. The bass is pretty muted, it's not very heavy, and also it's not really coming from any speaker grills, it's coming from behind the keyboard. So that's something that's not as good as the Pro, but it still sounds great for most people, and of course if you're wearing AirPods or something else, it won't make a difference. Now I'll be carrying this with me regularly if I need to edit a video on the go, maybe if I need to record something and I just need something quickly, this will edit video no problem, as long as it's maybe not 20 minutes long, 30 minutes, then it could take a little bit excess time to, to export as the processor could get quite warm. However, for day-to-day -day tasks, this is definitely a great machine. However, at $12.99, I think it's a great price, but if you bump up to, say, $2,500, you fully spec it out like this one, you'll probably wanna go with the 14-inch MacBook Pro over the MacBook Air. You get a better screen, better speakers, better battery life, and more ports on the side and things like that. So that would be better if you're going to use it in really intense situations, but for day-to-day -day use, I think this MacBook Air is great. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. Of course, I'll link the wallpaper from this in the description as well. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe, and if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.